Absolutely. I, I think um, uh, with Duchenne, um, there is a lot of different mutations within the gene uh, that are amenable to um, a form of therapy called exon skipping, which uses antisense oligonucleotides. So the um, NSO50 program is one of the steps towards um, a specific type of um, amenable mutation, which is a exon 50 amenable uh, skip mutation. And I think it's it's really exciting because it's a step in the right direction to solve more of this puzzle of DMD. And it's it's I, I want to liken it to one of the um, sort of you know, um, one of one one of the weapons in our you know sort of armamentarium against uh, Duchenne, it's not the only one, and it serves a specific purpose for exon fifty amenable mutations. So, there's a lot of excitement in in the in the field with all the therapies that are coming out for Duchenne, and this uh, exon fifty would serve a specific purpose for a subset of patients. Uh, within uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So exon skipping therapies in general um, are used to um, skip over this mutation uh, in Duchenne that actually stops um, the production of the dystrophin protein. Uh, and what the skipping therapies do is they try to sort of almost uh, go over the mutation uh, so as to not stop that uh, process uh, whereby, you know, protein translation takes place. And they, they actually help with production of protein. It may not be the same length of protein that you, you would see in a non-Duchenne patient, but at least it makes enough protein to help the muscles at least gain some function or preserve some function, I should say, rather. Um, so the, the thought process always is that with these mutations, there is a certain natural progression of disease in the Duchenne muscular dystrophy individuals. So what you're trying to do is by skipping over these mutations, you're giving enough of this uh, back to the patient for that natural history. So if you if you visualize sort of a, a line or a trend, and that trend is you know a slope that goes down, what you're trying to do is to make a difference in that sort of decline in the slope. So you're trying to flatten it almost if you can. And someday we really want to not only flatten it, we want the slope to go up. Um, and, and that would be actually gaining some of what you have lost. But I think at this point, what we're looking at with this therapy is to stop progression. No, I th I think there are lots of um, hopes that are hanging in on in in any trial that you know begins in this sort of phase one slash two. Um, your initial um, hope is that you do not see any events that are adverse or side effects, and safety is uh, you know not of a big concern because at any point you know you have to observe the first do no harm sort of tenet as you as you go through medicine. So once you get to a point where the benefits are something that you're trying to uh, elucidate, you don't want safety concerns while you're doing that. So the phase one slash two trial is a more of a step towards safety. And then mixed in there are some measures that will look at efficacy, but efficacy is not the prime target of the trial, usually in this phase. And when we do look at efficacy, what we're hoping to do is to use some measures that we know are markers of efficacy. So such as we, we, we look at patients who in with these particular kind of mu mutations are trending, like I described earlier, uh, have a downtrend in their, in their function. And we measure what those functions are and we measure some of those mobility tests or outcome measures. And when we do these trials, what we are hoping for is we see a change and a change that is positive. Either the downtrend is not as much or there is no downtrend at all, which would be wonderful. We also look at measures that are within the muscle itself. So we take the muscle uh, in, uh, and do a muscle biopsy. 
and we look under the microscope for what we are doing at the level of the dystrophin protein and are we making more protein um, and by and just making protein is not enough you have to correlate making that protein with function so if we get all those markers aligned and they show like an uptick or an uptrend or a decrease in the downtrend along with no safety concerns then we then we think of the trial as being a successful trial uh, for the patient. So a lot of hopes are pinned on the trial. It's too early to say what we are going to see uh, without actually having dosed the patients.